Hi, I'm here with Lauren Chinnery and Glianne Purcell Brown, who are multi talented, brilliant, brilliant people. And they are both members of the Blonde Bombshells of 1943, the brilliantly nostalgic show, which is coming to the Bolton Octagon from the 9th of June to the 3rd of July. Now, Lauren is no stranger to nostalgia, having performed in loads of shows, but mm -hmm. doing the Dream Coats and Petticoats tour of the year. UK and it's kind of sequel bringing back the good times as well which I saw and it was amazing um meanwhile as long as doing as well as doing loads of other shows as well um Glianne has just been filming living the BAFTA and Oscar nominated film performing alongside Bill Nye and Tom Burke you know as you do so <laughs> thank you so much for bringing all of your wealth of talent along today and coming to chat with us at Manchester Theatres Thanks for having Our us. Pleasure. Thank you. So um, the show, we want to know everything. So I believe it's got two very distinctive acts. So I thought maybe you could kind of take an act each and talk us through it. So maybe Lauren, if you wanted to tell us, talk us through the kind of the story of the first act. And then Glianne, if you talk us through what happens in the second. Sure. So um, the show begins uh, in the modern day. And we're hearing from uh, a girl called Elizabeth, and she is talking about her relationship with her grandma. And she then goes on to say, uh, here is a story that grandma told us um, of the most amazing day that she ever had in her life. And we travel back in time to 1943 to witness this day that grandma experienced. Um, through the eyes of a lot of characters, um, but Liz is grandma. So I play Elizabeth in modern day and then I come back as Liz in 1943, Grandma. And Grandma is auditioning to be part of the Blonde Bombshells, which is an all-girl um, swing band in 1943. And they have lost a number of members uh, due to uh, touring American air bases <laughs> and members sort of popping off with GIs here and there. So uh, they've got a big gig coming up that evening and they're desperately trying to find some new members. So um, along comes Liz. She plays a clarinet. She's in the band. Fantastic. She's very young. Um, she's in the sick form. So she's still at school, just about to, to leave. Um, and then we have some other people who turn up to audition for the band as well, one of whom is Lily, <laughs> played by Glianne. Um, I'll let you talk a bit more about your character in a minute if you'd sure. like to. Um, and then there are two other characters who also audition for the band as well, but I won't tell you who they are as I don't want to reveal mm. too much about the surprises of the plot line at this yes. point. Okay. Um, but um, from the point of view of my character, Liz, I think uh, the, the plot for her is, is sort of her, at the start of the show, she is very much still a young girl. She is at school. She turns up in her school uniform. And actually, by the end of the show, she's almost made that step from from teenage years into adulthood which is um amazing so you sort of see that journey of her as, as she goes through uh yeah so by the end of act one we do have a fully formed band mm -hmm. and then the air raid siren goes off and everybody has to relocate uh for the next part of the show <laughs> which takes us i guess to act two so act two we are in the air raid shelter and without saying too much i feel like act two is just more seeing the development of the different characters and um, the relationships between the characters. We get a few, I don't want to say secrets, a few, um, a bit of knowledge is revealed. Yeah. Yeah, which maybe makes you understand the characters a, a bit more as to, to why they are the way they are. Personally for Lily, I feel like, because um, Lily and, uh, and Liz are a bit of like a duo, aren't they? Uh -huh. and I think I agree with the same that, you know, my character really grows, I think, throughout the second act. And, you know, she's a, she's a nun. I don't know if you guys knew that. She's a nun throughout the... I was going to say, she's a singing nun, isn't she? Singing <laughs> nun, yeah. So she gets to try on the blonde bombshell dresses. And as a nun, you know, you've made a vow to, yeah. um, you know, wear the the habit and remove all outworldly things but for this moment in time she's been given permission by her holy mother to I guess serve God in this particular way and um yeah you just see her really grow and flourish and kind of stand in her own ground and just 
serve God in the way that she loves to serve God, which is through bringing joy to people. Um, yeah, and then well, Act Two, we call it we call it Act Three. It's so, but, yeah, but, act. yeah, but extra, <laughs> yeah. I guess it's technically within Act Two because there's no interval. Mm. Um, and then Act Three is going to blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, it's going to blow your mind um, because we then perform the concert. And we are all playing instruments like live. So it's like a real party. I and was going to ask about that. Sorry, go on. Yeah, no, I was going to say, we haven't actually mentioned much about the music, but the music is so at the heart of this yes. show. And it's all um, songs from the 1940s. So it's a lot of recognisable music, songs that are still very popular today in different um like remake incarnation yeah 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 so it's all about the how the music has influenced people how it makes them feel mm. how it is for a group of women to be yeah. in the 1940s playing music together and not um darning socks and Cleaning. washing nappies yeah. all of those sorts of things and that's a big part of the show as well that freedom that these women feel coming together yeah. forming a band and playing this incredible music um throughout the show which we very much love so much fun (laughs) I was going to say because there's there's a real nostalgia feel to the show yet that sounds weird because so many of us weren't around in 1943 so how can you be nostalgic but it's kind of like it's in our blood it's there and and we all know this music and I think from particularly that like what we've all gone through the last few years everyone's come to realize just how important music is So can um, you two kind of say, I know, obviously, Lauren, you've said you play the clarinet um, and Glianne want to know what you play as well. But tell us how music has really influenced you. And do you have a favourite song in the show? So I play the alto sax in the show and the banjolele. I've learned to play the banjolele. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's been fun. Um, what was the question again? What do I so, um What does music mean to you? And what do you have a favourite song in the show? Oh, well, I feel like for me, music, as in for Glianne in general, music means a lot because I feel like music is a universal language. You could be from anywhere in the world and you can speak to someone through, everyone understands yeah. or can hopefully appreciate music. You don't have to speak the same language to understand or appreciate a song or a melody. So I think that's what it means to me and I feel like as you know lockdown showed for me I was like oh wow like art is so important whether it be music the radio books um watching like programs just art in general but especially music like imagine a world with no music I just think it would be the most boring place in the world well (laughs) yeah (laughs) so um it's extremely important for me what about you um Yes, I mean, music has been a part of my life ever since I was really, really little. Um, my dad actually runs a big band playing all the wow. 40s music. So literally since I was like three, I've been going to their gigs and um, hearing the music and seeing the Lindy Hop dancers and seeing all the instruments. And then when I was a bit older and I learned, I learned to play the alto sax first, which I do play a little bit of in the show as well. Um, I started playing with the band and then singing with the band. So this particular era of music is just it is my Mm. absolute favorite so this is a bit of a dream come true for me (laughs) Um, because I absolutely love it and um yeah it is it is very nostalgic you're you're so right people recognize the melodies and I think this particular era has such a link to kind of hopefulness and um and a coming togetherness of people and community and that's why I think over the years these songs have just remained a part of of life because they they bring us back to that time when we were very hopeful and people came together for for things you know so yeah um yes and my favorite song in the show um fluctuates from day to day um, <laughs> yes. um some days I'm like oh I really love doing that one and some days another one I think at the moment it's probably where or when which Ooh, happens in act okay. two yeah what's nice. your favorite my favorite oh it's so hard like Cassie you to pick between family members. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it does, again, it fluctuates day to day. But I'd say today it's probably, um, I love Taint What You Do. I just think it's really fun. Mm-hmm. And like just everyone knows it. Sounds fab. Bit it of fun. fun. Yeah. Yeah. It, oh, I just can't, honestly, I can't wait. And 
can audience members because obviously I'm, I'm guessing you get like a mixture of people coming to watch this it's not just older people it's not just young people it's everybody yeah. can we kind of bring our leftover coronation flags can we wear our 15 pound t-shirts that we only wore for one day can, can we really get involved in it our audience is getting involved please get involved yes, we'd love that flags. I mean we actually whip Ooh. out flags at one point so please like we would love love an extra flag one of our cast members actually in a previous interview really was like dress up <laughs> dress up everybody <laughs> encouraging people to dress up do you know what like on stage I think because the audience become part of the atmosphere at the end of the show they are the audience at the concert you know the more that you want to throw yourselves at it and yeah. let loose and enjoy yourself the better we the would better. love yeah. it so brilliant I love it <laughs> and I also love very quickly before I let you go um the fact that you've said it's women normally when you get plays that are around the war or anything to do with that it, it's the soldiers it's the men it was the men who were in charge this is about what the women did right this is yes. about what we did and the <laughs> they had and the friendships as you've said that they built is it important to for you to kind of show that oh yeah I think yeah. it's so important. Like what you said, there's not many stories about women and what the women did during the war, how we came together during the war, supported, encouraged. Um, and I think it's such a beautiful way to tell that story or a particular story of that. And it's such a, a mixed match of people that you wouldn't like normally put together. It's like a nun, a schoolgirl, yet these women still could come together and just encourage and love each other and, and just create something magical. And it really was a time where women did things for the first time it was the first time that they um had had jobs that they would never normally have done before they came out of their households and had to you know they were conscripted either into military posts or into um working in the land working in factories all of these sorts of things and a lot of women really found themselves and um found a new sort of lease of life almost i suppose mm -hmm. um with that so actually and as Diane says, there's so many different women in this show. Each one is very, very individual mm. and unique and has a very different story of how they got there. So, yeah, it's been absolutely wonderful um, reh rehearsing it. We've had an absolute blast, oh, haven't we? Yeah, it's been yeah. so much fun. <laughs> it just sounds like serotonin on stage. That's what it sounds <laughs> like. And I cannot wait. So everybody, please, please come along from the 9th of June to the 3rd of July at the Bolton Octagon. You've heard it here. Take everything coronation left over your flags your bunting your clothes get involved and cheer them on it sounds absolutely glorious thank you so so much because you're in the middle of rehearsals right now as well aren't you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for taking um your tea break to come and chat with us we will see you there and all the best of luck thank you so yeah. much thank you for having us see you there bye, bye. bye.